welcome back today we are going to talk about the human reliability so when we are discussing about the behavioral and cognitive methods in the field of uh, cognitive ergonomics human reliability is very important uh, component that we should all understand and measure it so when we are talking about human reliability it means that when somebody is or the operator is in a particular system and interacting with each uh, component of the system maybe the other operator or maybe the machine component in the particular environment it is very important that there is less chance of error of doing any kind of uh, kind of activities or kind of operation right so if we miss to do that if there is some kind of error happens there is always a chance that we increase the cost of the whole system right in terms of money or in terms of time or the uh, kind of you know uh, breakdown process time and everything right so when we are talking about somebody or some worker or operator working in a particular system in a particular um, uh, working environment there the kind of human reliability we need to secure so that minimum requirement is being taken care and there is less chance of error because if there is any error there is some kind of mistakes then definitely there is going to ha uh, happen some kind of accident and because of accidents there are lot of losses right so we need to understand any system from the perspective of the human reliability if we if we understand that particular aspect then we will be able to do some kind of precautionary measure to run that particular system uh, smoothly okay so here today we are going to understand the human reliability and how do we assess them or how we can take the precautionary measures based on those assessment okay so that part we are going to study so before we go ahead with the uh, particular tool on techniques which is going to help us to measure or assess the human reliability first let us understand more about human reliability so what exactly it is so successful any successful human performance within specific time frame because when we are talking about a person working in a specific area of work then what happens we need to understand there is a time limit if we cross the time limit that is also a uh, failure of that particular system so we need to make sure that successfully a person or the human or the operator is performing that particular task within the specified time frame and the environmental condition whatever environmental conditions is being decided we need to make sure the he or she is in a position to complete that in that specific environment okay so achieving the desired performance outcome and reducing the human error if we can do that then it happens that whole system will run successfully so when we are talking about human reliability we need to understand the human behavior model and their individual influencing factors we can understand if there is an environment where somebody is operating and they are interacting with a particular machine or many machines and the peers like you know many other operators then what will happen there will be inflow of information to the brain there will be task demand because Uh, if somebody is in a particular working environment definitely there is a task demand also there will be some environmental and situational factors so when i am working in the morning when i am working in the evening 
or in the afternoon situations are not exactly same. It is not about the time frame I am talking about suppose there is uh, I am taking a class in a particular classroom and uh, somebody knock the door to ask for something. So, that is a situation. How do we react on it? Okay, the same situation may happen in a shop floor, in a assembly line, right? So, how people think uh, people are reacting to it? So, suppose there is an assembly line going on and there is some wrong product came into. So, how do you eliminate? How do you take decision and eliminate it? So, those are the environmental and situational factors. Also, it talks uh, all those things are related with your short term memory, external memory and the long term memory. So, all these factors are actually the influencing factor and it creates the human behavioral model. Okay? So, that is the background of human reliability. Now, when we talk about human reliability, we need to understand how do we manage it. So, there are multiple factors uh, uh, which contribute to the error or shape of human performance. So, may they may be categorized as job related, individual related and organizational related. So, if we talk about job related, it may be difficult or complex work, time of availability. So, if it is within a very short time span you have to do or you have enough time, you are so relaxed. So, how you are performing it, physical work environment, these are the major element that we consider in the job related area. In individual physical capability and condition, stress and motivation and in organizational related clarity of roles and responsibilities. Suppose there is an assembly line going on, if there, there are two workers working together uh, in the same assembly line, who is doing what? what supposed to be done by whom. All this clarity need to be there. If there is not much clarity, there will be definitely a chance to do some kind of mistake and accidents may happen. Level of supervision and workplace culture. This is very important aspect that is the workplace culture. Okay? So, how do we interact with our peer? How do we interact with our supervisor or the people who are working under us? So, how this structure is going on? What is the kind of level of freedom is there? Level of responsibilities are there? So, all those things matters when we are talking about human reliability. Now, these are some 10 elements that is going to connect or that is going to uh, help you to understand how do you manage the human reliability. So, first is the usable the procedure training and competency. So, if you are trained enough, competent enough, definitely the reliability, there is a chance of chance that reliability is in an increased state. Staffing and workload, organizational change, safety, critical communication. Uh, so, if safety and critical communications are made properly, then what will happen? The every information will pass from one uh, uh, operator to other operator very nicely and you know flawlessly and therefore, there will be less chance of mistake, error and all those things. Okay? Then designing uh, for the people. So, if you are designing things for people, then definitely it is more beneficial and you will be able to uh, handle or manage the human reliability correctly. Okay. Then fitness of work, health and safety culture and maintenance is inspection and testing the error. So, here this is very important is the testing the error. Suppose you have uh, some kind of problem, but how do you test it? How do you uh, make sure that that uh, the you know things are going to be corrected in this way? So, how the situation can be 
tested. So, if there is a problem, if you give a proper instruction and those instruction is impacting or not, how do you manage them? All those things, if it is being taken care, then definitely managing the human reliability will be far more easier uh, way or it will be more easy method. Okay? So, when we are talking about human reliability, one important term comes into mind that is the human error. So, if there is a failure of human reliability, definitely error comes into picture. So, what is the error? A result of an unfortunate, uh, no, unintentionally inappropriate or undesirable human behavior, which is unintentional. So, I am not doing it intentionally. Inappropriate, of course, I should not do it, but it happened. Okay. So, inappropriate and undesirable. I never, this is not desired to be done, but it happened. Okay. So, those are the things uh, we will be calling it as error. Okay. So, what is the definition? A result of an unintentional, inappropriate or undesirable human behavior. It is very common for unwanted events in industry to be attributed to human error when the desired performance outcome is not being achieved. Okay? So, that will be termed as human error. Now, when we are talking about human failure or human error and the individual working in a particular situation, this is the model where human reliability comes into picture. So, you have organization in that you have a specific job to be performed and you are the individual who is working. Okay? So, you are working with you know interacting with the organization, you are interacting with your job that means you are performing your job and all these are both way interaction which is going to go for a go for an error when when there is a you know, lack of human reliability. So, that is why human reliability is very, very important. So, this uh, what will happen? Human performance will go down. So, successful or maybe intended and then there will be some kind of human error. Okay? So, for all these cases, if you are successful, then you are that means human reliability is on the higher side. But if there is an error, that means human reliability is on lower side. Okay? So, that, that is where human reliability plays an important role. Now, when we are talking about error, let us understand what are the types of error. So, mainly we find three major types, slips, laps and mistakes. Let us find out the definition of them. So, what is slip? When a process of its implementations are familiar, but there is a performance failure. Okay? So, the process we know, but, but what happens? There is a, wh while performing it, there is a failure that is slip. For example, pressing a wrong button or reading the wrong gauge. Okay? So, if that happens, definitely there is, there is an error in the communication. Correct? So, this is a type of error which is called as slips. Next is lapse. What happens in the lapses? A lapses are of the attention or memory. It is there but we miss to read that memory. Okay? Example, forgetting to carry out a step in a procedure. So, maybe for a particular system, you have to do step 1, step 2, step 3, step 4 like that. What you did, maybe after step 1, 2, you missed that step 3 and you performed the step 4. So, what happened? The ultimately, it is an error. Okay? So, it is completely memory driven. Okay, so, that is lapse and the third one is mistake. What it is? A mistake can be either of the following. One is rule based mistake, another is knowledge based mistake. What is rule based mistake? 
a rule that is incorrectly applied to the current situation. So, you know, know the rule, however, you applied that rule incorrectly okay, in a situation because it is very similar to another situation and that is why you mapped it wrongly. Okay, so, that is rule based. What is knowledge based? A solution to an issue is devised based on knowledge, experience and a mental model of how the system works. Okay. So, what happened? You mentally process it, but you process it because it is based on your own experience, own understanding, own previous memory. Okay. So, there may be you are doing some kind of mistake. So, mistakes are two types. One is rule based, another is knowledge based. Now, when we are talking about human behavior and then we are talking about their types and management, we need to understand that people demonstrate different types of behavior when carrying out any particular task and it can be dependent on the level of consciousness effort applies. Okay? And these are skill based, rule based and knowledge based. So, when we are talking about that you know, human behavior in a particular situation and we are talking about how to manage that human behavior, basically the human reliability, it is kind of three types. One is skill based, second is rule based and third is knowledge based. What is skill based? Simple and routine, often repeated task. So, every day we are doing it. Okay? So, if we come, we know we need to switch on the particular machine. So, you skill to do that. Okay? So, that is skill based. Rule based is apply rules to complete a particular task and knowledge based as earlier apply significant consciousness, conscious effort when the rules no longer apply. So, you what you do? You logically analyze the situation and take the decision. So, then it is knowledge based. Okay. So, there is rule if this happens you do this, if this happens you do that. So, like that you have a flow chart. Now, so that is rule based. You have things ready and you are doing it. Now, a situation comes where no rule is following. So, in a particular situation that this also not there, that also not there, this also not there, nothing is there. It is something else altogether. Then what you have to do? You have to rely on the experience or expertise or the previous memory that you have or maybe you learnt from some somewhere else. Okay? So, based on that knowledge, you have to take the decision. Then it is knowledge based and it is very, very critical and if we can enhance this particular thing in a particular situation, there will be very less chance of error and there will be, uh, we will be able to control many incidences and accidents. Okay? Now, what is skill based behavior? So, when we are talking about skill based behavior, it is basically the attention required for a particular task is required in a minimal amount. Okay? So, the person effectively running on autopilot. Okay? So, like it is automatically happening. Yeah, there is no effort to be played. Okay? Although basic progress checks are performed from time to time, these checks are largely subconscious. Okay? So, problems occur when the attention for checking is diverted. So, you know you are attention with a full attention you are doing this, 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 automatically it is happening. There is no chance of a mistake. But as soon as there is something which is diverting the attention, there will be a chance of doing the mistake. So, that is the skill based behavior. Okay? What is rule based behavior? So, rule, uh, rules are applied to the task to either help the work through a problem or to identify the correct action to take. The rules may be stored in our memory 
because normally that's the way we learn. So, we memorize every rule. So, suppose uh, somebody is coming to the class from the childhood, they know they need to wish uh, to the teacher as soon as the teacher arrives, right? That is the rule. So, it is it's like, you know, uh, they do it. Now, question is if in, instead of teacher, somebody else is coming, do they need to wish or not to wish? So, how do they take those decisions, okay? So, similar kind of things, okay? So, if the power is reaching, uh, like it is an example to the lamp, but there is no light, then either bulb is faulty or there may be some other reason. Now, question is, first rule is everything is correct. Still bulb is not uh, giving light, that means bulb is not working properly. So, replace the bulb. So, it is a rule, right? Okay. So, this is how the uh, human behave in a particular situation, then it is rule based behavior. So, if the temperature, uh, it is another example, if the temperature in tank A has reached 75 degree centigrade, then the switch the steam heating or to the half power. So, if it is reached there, then you switch it on to the half. Okay. So, it is a kind of rule that you set in a particular situation. So, problems occur when part of the rule is neglected, the wrong rule is applied or a step in a written instruction is missed. Now, take example of the first one, okay, that power is reaching to the lamp, but still the bulb is not getting light. So, rule is that bulb is not correct, bulb is, uh, is, is damaged or something. So, you need to replace the rule. Now, it happen if a novice person is there, what he or she will do? He, they will read the instruction. Now, the last part, suppose change the replace the bulb is missing, the person is clueless and he or she will not be able to correct the system, maybe one case. Maybe uh, like here you, you can say wrong rule applied. Okay. Now, in other situation something is been taken like you know maybe you switch uh, uh, the switch is not correct or um, uh, the, uh, the that particular where is you know uh, some kind of tearing is there or some because of some other reason bulb is not uh, no, uh, lighting then if you do not know that then you will rule out everything, you will only stick that the bulb is not actually functioning, you need to replace the bulb. Anyway, if you do that, suppose there is a problem with this particular where current is reaching to the lamp, but still it will not light if there is a problem in this particular where. Right. So, that way you need to see that where the problem is lying and how these type of rule based behavior can be taken care and how the system can be improved. The last one is the knowledge based behavior. So, usually it is applicable in a problem solving or troubleshooting task. So, every case you know uh, there is some kind of experience already gathered from your previous handling things, then using that experience you are going to handle the current situation. So, it demands the significant conscious effort when the rules no longer apply. This is when a solution to an issue is devised based on the knowledge experience and a mental model of how the system works. Okay. So, this is the knowledge based behavior. Now, human factors in the incident investigation. So, first we should understand what is incident and what is accident. So, when 
there is some kind of mistakes happen or there is some kind of failure of human reliability then what happened the system fails. Now due to the system fails there is some kind of loss then it is basically the accidents whereas if only it uh, there is a mistake but it just you know you have taken care of the situation there is not much of um, you know uh, property loss then maybe you can term it as incidents depending on this situation to situation this incidents and accidents these terms keep on interchanging with each other so wh what we are going to understand in this particular slide is that when we are talking about investigating the incident what is the role of human factors. So, an incident investigation gathers and organize the information and these information can be used to identify the human and organizational factors that contributed to the incident and therefore inform recommendation for improvement. So, we understand what are the sequences are ha sequences happen and where there, there is a failure and how do we improve that situation. So, that recommendation we give. So, the key to effective investigation is to ensure that the approach used discovers the underlying reasons why an incident occurred, why an incident occurred not just the error made by the last persons involved. It may not happen the last person who was doing that particular job is only responsible. It may happen that something went wrong earlier in the whole system and therefore the last person did some kind of error. So when we are talking about investigating the incidents what you have to do you have to study the uh, study in full length ok. So that is the uh, procedure or uh, uh, steps we should follow when we are investigating any kind of incident. So, again in that particular case the causes of an accident may be due to the lack of training. The analysis should find out why the person involved lacked uh, that particular training, why? was there is kind of unavailability of training or the way the training has been given was not you know, uh, enough or the content of the training was not enough for this particular case what. So, maybe we need to evaluate those as well. So, what lead to an untrained person being involved in the task and what system within the organization fail. So, when we are talking about investigating the incidents all these should come into picture. Now, when I am talking about uh, the same thing that is the human errors in, 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 uh, in any incidents factors uh, that promote the effective in uh, no incident investigation it is mainly nine components ok. So, a small uh, a system allowing any worker to formally report an incident. So, if uh, the person who made this or who met with that particular incident if formally is not being reported that will not be able to analyze or we will not be able to uh, understand or investigate that incidence ok. So, that first is the reporting. Then clear guidance on how initial reports are to be made. So, every industry, every situation should have their own guideline that how to report that particular incident and the information required in those reports. So, because every situations are different. So, in every context this guideline should be there beforehand. So, the op option to report or anonymously. So, otherwise what will happen if somebody met with some kind of incident he or she may be biased enough 
to report it and then what will happen there will be less chance of investigating the things properly. So, anonymous reporting should be available this facility should be available in every organization. So, rules for determining whether or not to investigate, uh, investigate a reported incident and the required uh, speed of response. These things can be made into a policy and that should follow over and over the years and maybe if it is required they can do the amendment of those policies. And the resources to conduct an investigation with external supports available as needed. If they are unable to do it in house, they may take help from the outside. Okay? So, now why when we understood all these uh, aspect of human reliability, now let us understand one small technique or one very small tool which is going to be used to assess the human reliability. Name of this technique is HART that is human error assessment and reduction technique. So, what we are going to do? We are going to assess the human error and we are going, uh, we are going to try to reduce this particular human error which is being found in a particular system. So, this technique is called HART. Okay. Now, first Intro, uh, let us have some introduction of it. So, it is designed to be a quick and simple technique for quantifying the risk of human error. A general method which is applied to any situation or industry where human reliability is important like automobile industry, maybe railway, maybe in aviation, nuclear power plant, everywhere, wherever the human reliability is a major concern, we can use this particular technique. A quantitative human error probability assessment technique, so it is quantitative, it is not qualitative, can be used in combination with qualitative human task analysis. So, that also we can do that identify the operator task to be assessed. So, relatively this particular technique is simple to use when compared with, with other human reliability quantification method. Okay? It is easily understood by practitioners from both engineering and social science background because uh, both these type of people actually use this particular tool and it is very easy when we will explain it we will understand that how quickly some, someone can learn this particular technique. Okay. What it has? It has 9 generic task step we call it GTT 9 generic task, uh, task types and described in heart each with an associated nominal human error potential. Each task we will be having nominal human error potential. So, there is whenever we are having a task there is always a chance there will be some kind of nominal error. So, that is being taken care in this particular technique. So, uh, we call it HEP that is the nominal human error potential. 38 error producing conditions already predefined. So, in a particular situation there may be any one of them or four of them, five of them may present. So, they quoted almost 38 error producing condition or EPC that may affect the task reliability. This EPC each with a maximum amount by which the nominal human error potential can be multiplied. So, we will what we are going to do HEP multiplied by EPC. Okay? So, HART is recognized as a successful and cost effective tool for predict, predicting the human reliability and identifying the ways of reducing the human error. So, first we are going to 
identify the human reliability where the problem is there and how do you reduce it ok. It can also be applied to an industrial operation due to its methodology being centered upon the human operator rather than the technical process ok. So, as this is specifically for human not for the technical like machines ok. So, that is why this is very much acceptable tool in the um, industry and types of processes only by the observation and of course, we need a skill to observe it. So, somebody who is very much expert in the operation of that particular situation, he or she only will be able to do it. If you are a novice person, person who is observing that particular operation first time will not be able to do it. You need a time to understand the whole process and then only you will be able to use this particular tool. So, heart is based on the following you know, uh, premises. First one that the basic human reliability which is dependent upon the generic nature of the task to be performed. Given you know, perfect condition, this level of reliability will tend to be achieved consistently with a given nominal likelihood within uh, you no know, probabilistic limit. And given this perfect condition do not exist in all circumstances. It may be not possible that this perfect situation is always exit to exist. So, the human reliability predicted may be expected to degrade as a function of the extent to which it is identified. So, these are the kind of area or premises this heart can be used ok. Now, first let us understand these 9 generic task type. So, these are very generic you can categorize the task of the industry in any one of them. So, first one is very much familiar. So, we are calling it totally familiar performed at a speed with no idea of likely consequences ok. So, that is first. Second is shift or restore to new or origin on a single attempt. Third complex task requiring high levels of comprehension and skill. Fourth, fairly routine task performed rapidly. So, initial one it is completely uh, you know you know the, the fourth one you fairly routine task ok, but it is done very rapidly or given a scant attention ok. Then routine task and highly practiced rapid task involving re relatively low level of skill. Sixth is restore or shift a system to original or new state following procedures with some checking. Then completely familiar well designed highly practiced routine task occurring several times per hour. Se uh, eighth is respond correctly to system command even when there is an augmented or automated supervisory system and the last one none of the above. So, these are the 9 generic task type identified for heart ok. Now, let us understand the key element. So, classify the task when you are talking about using or implementing HART, it is the classifying the task for analysis into any one of these 9 generic tasks ok. So, uh, among all these 9 you may have only one identified for your chosen analysis ok. So, assign the nominal HEP to that task how do you do that we will show in the next table. Decide which EPC may affect the task reliability that we are going to see in the next slide and then consider the assessed proportion of affect APOA for each. So, what is that assessed, assessed proportion of affect we call it APOA ok assessed proportion of affect for 
each EPC and calculate the HEP. Okay. So, like that we are going to understand that how what is the kind of level of human reliability you have in that particular task. Okay. So, now let us understand the steps. What you are going to do? I think partially I already explained. Still, I am going to repeat it that classify the generic task types. So, from that table you are going to understand among all these 9 which one you are. Okay, uh, you, uh, which one is your case? Then assign the that nominal HEP that is the human error probability. Identify the error producing condition. Determine the assessed proportion of affect that APOA. Calculate the final human error probability and consider the error reduction measures. Now, step by step in detail. When I am talking about this table 1, I am going to refer this particular table. So, here you can see A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, M. Okay? So, all these things are being mentioned here and according to the GTT, you can see the proposed nominal human unreliability value. Okay. So, this is 5th percentile, this is 95th percentile data. So, what you have to do? Classify the task in terms of its human unreliability into any one of these 9 tasks. Okay. That is the first step. Then what is the second step? Second step is the error producing condition and then multiply. So, you have to find out error producing conditions and then you need to multiply. So, for that what you are going to do? So, the identify the relevant error producing conditions to the scenario or task under analysis which may negatively influence the performance and obtain the corresponding multiplier. So, as this is a pre-computed chart, here also it is a pre-computed chart for error producing conditions. Okay? Now, then what you are going to do? The maximum uh, like after step 2, what you are going to get? Maximum predicted nominal amount by which unreliability may increase. So, you, you are getting the multiplier. So, these are the values. Okay? Uh, these are the multipliers. Fine? In step 3, what you are going to do? Assess the uh, proportion of effect. So, estimate the impact of EPC on the task based on your judgment. In next part, what you are going to, uh, going to do is the assess the effect that is the APOP. So, calculate the assessed impact for each EPC according to the formula. So, multiplier minus 1 multiplied by this APOP plus 1. Okay? So, then you will get the assessed impact value. Now, we will give the example and you will understand that. Once we complete that step, what you are going to do? That human error probability. So, calculate the overall probability of failure of task based on this formula. And then you get the probability of overall probability of the failure and then what you need to do task reduction measures you have to take care. Now, we will go ahead with the example so that you can understand it. The context first I describe and then I will take you to the data. So, a reliability engineer uh, in a particular situation has the task to assess the probability of a plant operating operator failing to carry out the task of isolating plant bypass route as required by the procedure. So, that the person has to do. So, the operator is fairly inexperienced in fulfilling the task. It does not follow the correct procedure. The individual is therefore unaware about because the person is not experienced, right? The person was not 
aware about the situation. So, the person, the individual is therefore unaware of the hazards created when the task is carried out. So, this is the kind of context you have and now this there is an incident and you are going to understand the human reliability, human error and you are going to give the measure. So, how you are going to do it? So, what this is the human like pictorially this is the reliability engineer, this is the procedure to be followed and problem is the situation was not person who is operating, the person is not aware about the situation. Okay. So, some assumptions to be taken before we go ahead or start the analysis. What are those assumptions here? The operator is working a shift in which in his seventh hour. Okay. So, that means first hour, second. So, he is kind of exhausted. He did lot of work. He is about to take the shift off. So, that is the situation one. Second, there is a talk circulating the plant that is due to close down. Okay. So, there is some kind of psychological things like a change in the change in the environment of this uh, place. Okay. So, it means that company is going to shut down. So, there is always an uh, an annoying and anxious situation. It is impossible for the operators work to be checked at any time. So, they know that if whatever they do there is less chance somebody will come and supervise it. So, that is the condition. So, local management aim to keep the plant open despite a desperate need for revamping and maintenance work. Okay. So, already management is in a situation where they are running it just like that. Okay. If the plant is closed down for a short period, if the problems are unattended, there is a risk that it may remain closed permanently. So, these are the kind of assumption. Now, these assumptions always comes from your field visit. Okay. So, this information is very important because when we are talking about human reliability, all these varieties also it it's actually changes from context to context. If we do not gather all this information, it may happen that we will not be to able to analyze the situation properly. So, these types of information is very important when we are starting any kind of incident analysis. Okay? So, this is the assumption for this particular case. Now, method. From the relevant table like uh, the first table and second table, it can be established that type of task what the person was doing in this situation is of F type. Okay? Let us go back and see what is F type. So, here, right? restore or shift a system to original or new state following. Okay? So, that is the F type situation. So, here I mentioned it. Okay? In this particular sign, I highlighted it. So, what it says the restore or shift. So, that I mentioned and this task type has the proposed nominal human unreliability which is 0.003. So, you can see it is mentioned here 0 0.003 nominal unreliability score. Okay? Other factors to be included in the calculation are provided in the next table. So, you can see from here. Now, what is that error producing condition? What are the error producing condition? Point number 9, 12, 15, 18 and 31. So, based on those assumptions and context identified during the observation and during the field visit, we realized these are the error producing conditions and these are the multipliers for them. Okay? These are the multipliers for them. So, what we are going to do? So, you can see we outline these multipliers and then this affect error and the assessed effect. So, we multiplied as per the form, formula given 
in our earlier slides. So, if we do this, this is the final result. So, the final calculation for the normal likelihood of failure can therefore be 0.27. Okay. So, that is the working heart. Now, why we call it as working heart? It may happen that during further analysis, okay, something can be changed, some situation can alter. That is why always uh, we, we do, we call it as working heart, okay, not the heart calculation, we call it working heart. Now, what are the general assumptions we uh, did? Now, this is one more thing that is the securing the drums uh, during the truck loading uh, at a particular dock. So, what is the event one? Event one is the insecure load. First one is first event that is being identified for this particular case the general assumption under general assumption it is the insecure load. So, once the operator on the truck lowers a drum into a particular position, the drum is secured in place with lashing belts to prevent the drums from rolling or sliding off the truck. So, one upon it, it is there, if it this lash is not there, it will fall. Okay. So, that is the situation based on the failure of some or all of the task, any one if it miss, so everything will fall. The overall probability of failure to detect for an insecure drum load during truck loading will be then this, this is the value. Okay. Now, if this is the event that the insecure load if we go ahead or further we break it down, we will get the uh, like you know failure to detect insecure clamping. So, what are the things? Maybe because of you no know, lashing is not being done properly or some other things, okay. Drums are not placed properly. So, maybe we can take one step ahead to understand exactly what. So, failure to detect the insecure clamping by ground operator. So, it is not while driving. So, okay, while actually ground operator were you know, clamping them, so there may be a mistake or failure or operator self check and independent uh, check. So, the overall probability of failure to detect an insecure load by the operator on the ground and independent check by the operator on the truck, it will be like this. If we go further, maybe you know breaking down it further, failure to detect the insecure, insecure clamping by ground op operator self check. So, first they did it, then they did a checking, but in that self check it is not being detected. Then what happens? The generic hard task type taken to represent this task of clamping and ensuring it is secure is fairly simple task. Okay, it's just clamping, right? So they realized it. It is fairly secure, a simple task performed rapidly and given scant attention. Okay, it's a it's given scant attention. So it is one of the condition of your GTT. Okay, so maybe it's a that's why it's a type D, A B C D E F G H, right? So in the type D. Okay. So, the nominal unreliability therefore from the table it is 0 0.09 and the next table it shows that EPC and their impact. So, you can see their impact and then slowly what you can do you can use this particular formula and can find out this type of situation. Okay. So, this way you can use the heart or H E A R T tool to identify the human reliability and where the problem is, where you can reduce or where you can recommend the problem resolving area. Okay. So, there was an accident and major problem was actually here, right, self check. So, if that is that was being done properly, definitely the situation would not have arise. 
okay. So, what are the advantages of this particular technique? So, a very low demand on accessors resources and allows flexible assessment, identifies the major influences on human performance in a systematic and repeatable fashion, develop primarily for use in design assessment and appears to be the most powerful and useful in this particular type of context and can be incorporated by an functional task analysis. So, if you can do FTA along with this, it will be more effective, more strong tool okay? and it is very capable of sensitivity analysis as well and it is very versatile. So, heart has a track record in various industry. It is not that it is only applicable for this or that or like that. So, it is uh, you know applicable for many industries. So, that is why this is very useful tool. However, it has some kind of disadvantages as well. What are those? The EPC data has never been fully released. So, we can see in this particular chart. This is the different types of condition. This is only 38 numbers, right? However, it is, it is assumed that actually it is more, but it is never being published properly. So, it is has limitation. Okay. Theoretical validation we need to do. Hard relies to a uh, high extent on experts opinion because if you are not expert in this field, you will not be able to get the analysis done properly. So, you really need that first in the point of uh, probabilities of human error and also in the assessed proportion of the EPC effect because if you cannot do that then it is very difficult. You should be uh, extremely ex, you know, expert person, very much expert person in that particular job. Then only you can have this proportion classification, otherwise it is very difficult. The interdependency of EPC is not modeled in this particular uh, methodology and this assumptions of the independence does not necessarily hold in a real situation. So, these are the ad disadvantages of this particular tool. Now, let us understand what are the major applicable area. So, nuclear power plant, chemical plant, petrochemical, railway, aviation, many such industry where human reliability is real, real important factors to be considered to when we are talking about the safety of the whole system and uh, complete functioning of the whole system. So, we should be able to use this particular tool to assess, analyze and reduce the human error. And what do you need? We need only pen and paper and for data entry we should have the spreadsheet with us. Okay? So, this is all about heart. And the next class we are going to study one more such tool which is known as CREAM that is the cognitive reliability and inner error analysis method. Okay. So, to summarize we can say that HART is a qualitative human error probability assessment technique. It matches the task being assessed to one of the eight generic tasks description from a given database and then to modify the human error probabilities that is the HEP according to the presence and the strength of the identified error producing conditions. So, we should use or we should try to use this particular tool if you have access to such kind of data or what you can do? Hypothetically, you can use some data and try to uh, implement and try to get the recommendation done from by using this particular tool. That is all for today's session. We will meet in the next session. Thank you. Mm -hmm.